Hello, I am Bentham, and welcome back to Factory Living with Biters, where we are in the process of sorting out an iron buffer system here. We've got most of it in place, we just need to, I think, expand the walls by a level, and then just sort out some belting stuff. And then once we've done that, we should have a nice backup for the iron, though it doesn't look, doesn't look terrible at the moment, but I think I was messing with it. Yeah, it is terrible. The uh, the two belt well this is oh no it's not full it was full a second ago now it's not yeah this is not good we definitely need to uh, be hooking up the second bit so we'll bring this bit back and then we'll have enough room to bring that belt around all right there we go uh, we do need power though I will use a substation right there. There we go, it's all being unloaded. Now we just need an output belt. Uh, but I don't think I want to hook it straight up because everything's on one side of it, so we'll do a little bit of a of a belt balancer, I think. So we'll get splitter. And we'll just do our, our standard straight line one. There we go, and finally an underground belt somewhere. There we go. Good, okay, we now have our backup system in place. Fantastic. And so we shouldn't have iron problems for a long time unless the biters blow up some stuff up here. That reminds me, are oh, there efficiency modules in these miners? I will quickly check. Uh, yes, they are. Okay, that's good. We don't need to mess about with that then. So yeah, there's probably going to be some cases of the biters blowing up these miners, but it should be okay. They won't blow up the belts very much, and they're the important things. Speaking of blowing up, what's happening? We've got a wall being attacked just down here on our solar panels, I believe. Is it a permanent thing? It is a permanent thing. I will intervene. There is a bot on the case. Yeah, it's this bit. This bit was always going to be a problem. It was very awkward, but I didn't have much choice. Uh, I think we will clear it like so. And then he went in that way direction anyway, so that's fine. Put that back. And continue with our lives. We're getting delivered random individual bits of iron. That's possibly due to the iron shortage or me just using them in little bits. This belt still isn't looking great. The iron is not getting to the end of the furnace lines. That is not good. I will see if there's something I can do. Also, this doesn't need to be like this anymore. Are there any more of these went out? No, these are all still going. So... All the miners are running non-stop, except that one is occasionally struggling. That should be too bad. But over here, I think the problem is that we're unloading all onto one side. And it's making it slower. We could fix that with some fast belts. Perhaps not the best way, but it's the way I'm going to use. Also, I've made this whole thing, like, one longer than it needs to be. And actually, that means I can't put the outer belts in place. I might just do a quick rejig of that. Which is going to temporarily break all the things. And then the iron supply will definitely not be good, but then we'll uh, sort it again. So this needs to be cut back one. And, oh wait, no, it still has to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm being silly. At least it's more space efficient now, maybe. Oh, our inventory is full of random gubbins. It's the iron ore. I'm just going to dump that there, and that's probably not going to go well. I might need to uh, not have that happen. I might need to request a chest, but then it'll immediately request from these. I could switch them to storage chests, but then they would get random crap put into them, and it wouldn't be good. That's annoying. I wish there was a way to get it so that a chest could be like an intermediate one, where it requests what there is, but then only it, it isn't a storage chest. I said, yeah, what, what I need is uh, filters in storage chests that also prioritize the item being put into that particular chest. One day will happen, and it will make things so much nicer. Or maybe I'm just not thinking it through, who knows. Right, let's fix that. Uh, we could have them merging inside the compound, but I think that wouldn't help. So we'll not do that thing. 
Yeah, these being fast helps, but now I need a fast splitter as well, and then it will work properly. There we go. And now we have four of the uh, the five arms going, which helps. With any luck, that will now be enough that we can that the the ore will get down to the to the end of the furnace line, because then we have maximum efficiency from our furnaces, and any issues with uh, with supply come from not having enough furnaces. There we go. They are now all running, starting to build up on one side, and that should help the other side, maybe possibly. That bit might need a couple of red belts in places to get it going just quick enough. Oh no, no, it's building up now. This belt is looking a lot more full. We're starting to get build-ups of iron plates. Only on this side, though. Which is a little bit odd and worrying. Yes, this is looking quite nice. But it isn't actually building up. It might just take a while to fill things up a bit more. Our storage chest there is full. Goes down to the circuits, and it is actually backed up on the circuits. That's a good sign. Hopefully that will continue. Okay, I think we want to just leave that for a bit and see how it goes. But uh, the moment it looks like all our supplies are good, it's just that iron is a little bit iffy. Uh, if there's really an emergency, we could always set up a, another furnace column there and then have that do iron instead of copper. But I'm going to venture over here to our blue science and miscellaneous other gubbins area. The generally more advanced technology area. But yeah, this is absolutely fine. A third of the furnaces are running. Um, but the supply from up here is getting very dead. Let's have a quick look at it. There's, I guess, four miners going? It looks like four. This bit here is completely done, so we'll just clear it away. Uh, we'll implement bots. Though we are inside... Oh no, this is my construction range, we're fine. I don't think these... Oh no, these power poles are important. They actually connect up that furnace column. Which is a bit rubbish, really. Let's, let's get a slightly more professional uh, situation going on here. Which will momentarily break everything. We now have a long range pole. And then we can get rid of all these bits of gubbins. We have got rid of the light here. We can fix that, though, by putting it on all the long-range poles. And it's good, because it sort of forces us to uh, to space them out nice and evenly. I might leave in this, uh, this copper unloading system for now, because it could still be convenient. But yes, at this point, half of this assembly is... Well, no, not half. Three quarters of this assembly are completely useless. Let's go see how the miners are doing. There's a possibility that we could rejig them again and get even better coverage on the remaining bit. It's these four ones in the middle. We could possibly turn that into nine. But I think it might be a bit of a stretch. But getting this just cleared out would be good because then we don't have to worry about trying to defend this area. Though there is... There is that up there and some radars and things like that around here. Is that one that's just coal, isn't it? We don't need coal at the moment, I don't think. Yeah, we've, we've got the supply from there, and that's going fine. So I'd probably just ignore this bit. We'd have... We, we at least want a wall here. Uh, up to this lake, and then back down. Uh, to here, and then a bit... Well, I guess we'll, we'll bridge that bit, because that makes more sense. We'll have a big open area. It, like It'll be a bit tough to clear all these bases, but if we do it, we've got a nice open space for... Uh, various future projects and we would want to try and keep this in our range because otherwise we have no copper supply but I guess that is a, a good reason to set up a copper buffer as well right I'm gonna do a quick check of this I want to see like it's always nice to try and get uh, maximum mining speed going it's not usually a thing I do I usually go for maximum spacing but this is a good opportunity to go the other way with it we can get a bit more out of it. Like so. We can get... Actually, we can get nine. There we go. They're all covering 
or to some extent or another. This, isn't, this actually might be one of, like a setup that I had earlier on before I changed it for efficiency and now I've changed it back again. Because once again things have rearranged. But yes, this gets us back up to uh, more than half of the furnace assembly running actually, which is nice. At uh, the moment everything goes to the same side of the belts, but that might be okay, we'll see how much there is, and it might not be uh, overwhelming for the side of the thing. Right. Modules for all of them. Some of these will not run very long at all. The Like, this one has 240. Is this okay? Yeah, that looks alright. That has not built up, so we can just have it on one side. There's no particular reason, but it's, it's better. There's actually an evening out thing there anyway. Whatever. Just a random little bit there. Do we have any honours? No, we don't. We do have some more iron ore, though. I'm going to trash that, that, and I, that's probably still a bad idea. Repair that wall up. So yes, this thing will have plenty to do for a while. It will pretty much fully take over copper production for a bit again. Oh, how are these doing? Absolutely fine. 2,000 or 20,000 or something uh, iron ore between them. Either way, they're going to be good. Oh, there was a belt destroyed here earlier. Not a belt, a pipe. Aha, there it is. Some random biter decided he wanted to be in the, this very specific spot. And now I'm going to have an even number of underground pipes and it's all his fault. Or her, depending. Right. Uh, everything looks okay here. Lots of full belts. Uh, let's see how the modules are doing. And of course the assemblers of which we have a full 50. Fantastic. I never actually finished putting in the belts around here. I should probably do that thing. Let's put these in place. We're actually going backwards to what I was doing here, but that's fine. It'll help this little guy. Oh, no, now he's changed his mind. Now he's going over there. He just wanted to be not doing whatever I wanted him to do. Oh, there's... No, oh, of course, they're all being turned into... Uh, into assemblers, though. I guess maybe we should have another... Because there's room for another assembler here, like, if we need faster uh, speed module production. Maybe we don't, though. That's probably fine. We seem to be getting plenty. Uh, but yes, we have plenty of uh, efficiency modules, nearly 150, which is a multiple of three because it's three snacks. I will leave that for a minute while I start upgrading a bunch of stuff. No more level two assemblers for us. We'll get that little bit of extra speed. Oh, steady. Biter's getting in my way, slowing me down. Which is basically the definition of this series. For now. Right, uh, over here. Th there's not much point in upgrading the blue science at the moment because it's not been running for a very long time, but uh, it will be very important that we get the science done as quickly as possible uh, once we start harvesting alien artifacts and we can start doing uh, research again. Alright, that is everything. Oh no, there's the. Uh, the processing unit production. And the one gear set. Oh, I've run out. I had. I, okay, so apparently this was exactly 50 assemblers. Or 51, because it was that one. Already upgraded. So we will quickly grab one more to sort out that. Or eight more, seeing as they're there. And there's probably now. Well, there's now another five. Let's put two back. Wait, where did they go? Did I, I swear. Now I'm confused. Or did I? Was it five I needed? Whatever. So now we can just start going crazy with the with the modules. The only thing being that we want to put three and not four. So maybe it's better to just do it like that. We can do it with more hotkeys, like a hotkey for putting in all of them and taking out one. But uh, they basically take the same amount of time, really. There we go. No power consumption. We will be able to put all of our power into the laser turrets we will desperately need to stay alive. Well, no movement here. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, but I feel like these might be chunk boundaries. 
and that because I'm on the boundary, it's not registering that I'm on this, because usually when you go up between a wall and a belt, the belt moves you, but in a couple of... Oh, now it's working. Why didn't it work? Why was it like that before? Is it because I went around the corner for it? Ah, it was. It was something to do with the corner. Interesting. Right, anyway. Finish off these, and because we have uh, 150, we should have precisely enough to put in all of the assemblers. We would be short by a tiny bit, but there's the unassigned ones that will be doing level 2 and level 3 module production at some point. That uh, will not be getting efficiency for the moment. There we go. And then all the random fiddly ones over here. It's good that I have the range to reach them from outside the compounds. It's going to be very nice when, finally, we're able to uh, open everything up once the uh, the biters, once we built the main wall and the and we we become one giant defensive compound. I can open all this up and it'll look very strange because there'll be no apparent reason for the uh, for the weird positioning anymore. And this won't have to be such an absolute nightmare. I don't even know what half of it does. I just ignore it now. As long as I don't mess with it, it still works. I ended up stopping again then on the belt. And then we got pushed in by a biter. Oh, steady. There we go. And then we've got to turn this into a level 3. And module that up too. I want to see what our power consumption looks like. There might not be that much of a change because a lot of these machines currently aren't doing much. Yeah, that you can't see... This is, yeah, this is the last 10 minutes, so... Like, since there... Um, wait, which one's assemblers? Ah, assemb well, assemblers is this one, but that's because we've actually removed the level, uh, the level two assemblers. The level threes are not even on the grid, so I guess that's a good sign. We've taken these off, and the stuff we put on hasn't even made that much of a difference. The chemical plants have kicked in all of a sudden. Is that because of modules? That might be. What would it be? I say I have no idea. Oh, plastic! It'll be plastic, of course. Because plastic goes into these, they go into the modules. And we've got a bunch of module production going once again. Got a bunch more of these. Supply's going at a pretty good rate. We can also help it by giving it all of these things. Because we definitely don't need them anymore. There you go. From now on, we can use the level 3s for everything. And it looks like the circuit supply is keeping up well with the, the demands of uh, both of these running at once. Particularly now that they've... Uh, Increase speed by... Is it 150% 100, of the previous speed? Wait, what, what is it? Let's see. Crafting speed is... Half... Uh, oh no, oh, that's, the, that's the crafting... That's how long it takes to craft the actual thing. Yeah, the craft, oh no, the crafting speed is half for that. It's not 0.75, not 0.25. No, 1.25, so that's, that's a pretty good increase. That's nearly twice, nearly double. Very nice. Okay, uh, I will quickly check on oil, but I think everything should be okay over there. Now that we've got the automatic system in place, the only thing we have to watch out for is just all the oil going or there being too much oil, which is not in itself that much of a problem. It looks like the crude oil supply is fine, as are the supplies. Ooh, sulfuric acid is not as great, but it might be a sudden increase in demand causing the problems. Yeah, it's going... These are all sort of running full pelt here. In fact, that, that might be able... Like, if we add in another inserter, it might allow this to run a bit faster. Yes, I think it would. Okay, I will do this. And make fast inserter. And plonk it down here. So that should double that. That should help this increase in speed. Which should fix the problem. It's not that much of a problem. We still have it over two-thirds full. Pretty much three quarters. So that should be good. Okay, the oil fractions, how are they? Full, full, full. Fantastic. They're all at, well, they're all nearly full. Keeping perfectly balanced. There could be a sign that maybe we need more soon. The fact that they're not all completely full. But uh, it'll be a long time before they can go much more wrong than they have. Excellent. Oh, actually, these are. Oh, no, those are the petroleum gone. Petroleum wands. Gases, wands, guns, whatever. Yeah, this is almost empty, but sometimes it fills up a bit and stuff. Yeah, we've now got both of these 
Oh, now it's empty, so maybe it should have made a bit of a difference at least. It's likely that it has. Hopefully it helps. How is it now? It has improved, but that might be a temporary thing. Okay, we'll leave that for now. It looks like it's all good. How's everything over here? This is full, this is full, this is very full. Many landmines, they will be fun. Have to be careful though, it'll be difficult to, to place them before the war because biters will immediately start blowing themselves up on them. But I guess if I make a blueprint for just spamming them down in a random pattern, I can just start running around, like, plonking that blueprint everywhere. And uh, just building them as I go. And then once they blow up the biters, the, not the, bot, the biters, the bots replace them. Because uh, they count as something destroyed by biters, sort of thing. How is the coal? That one has run out. That one is apparently not enough to keep the supply running, so we... We'll need to see if we can get some more being mined here. Clear that one away. What can we do? Can we fit one around here somewhere? Maybe? Possibly? Ooh, we can... Ah, we can go there! And that has access to another 500. Fantastic. We will connect these up, even them out a bit, clear that tree because it's in the way of our belts, and then we will module it. There we go, that should be good. I don't think there are any belt balancers involved in this system. Also, is that... is that broken? Oh no, there's just a biter on top of it making it look like ground. I was very confused for a second there. Okay, uh, and we have reached uh, the end of the episode. We've got lots of little bits of maintenance done. I think next episode we will sort out a copper buffer system, and it should not take long. From there we will go on to something else that I will work out uh, closer to the time. Uh, so yes, we'll, we'll go stand over here next to our, our module system. We might get level 2 modules going soon. They're not vitally important. We could just stick with the th with the level ones, and they'll be okay. Uh, we will see. At the moment, I don't think these are doing anything. The processing units. Maybe that's for the best. Too many biters over here. I'm going to move into a slightly more open area, so it's not quite as deafening. So yes, I shall say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.